Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. I recently heard Ozzy Osbourne for the first time, and I liked it. So now I am relying on all of you and your recommendations for how to explore Ozzy more. Your most recommended song on that first video by 3,600, no more than that, upvotes, was Mr. Crowley. So that's what we're going to listen to today. Let's get to it. Sorry, we gotta, we gotta stop and appreciate this intro first. This, <laughs> these sounds take me back, right? We have some like analog synth sounds that are going on here. I feel like there's some sawtooth waves in there. It's uh, very intense and very specifically spooky kind of vibes I'm getting here. Apparently uh, I was told by Kirk that this is reminiscent of a clockwork orange. I haven't seen that. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if I should see that. Uh, and I'm going to go back to the beginning because this is like, it's just like, it feels like black magic already happening. <laughs> what a good combination and choice of sounds. <laughs> also, I just realized, I think he taped that. <laughs> that keyboard down. It's like, don't slide. We're just going to take you down. <laughs> Lots of open fists there to make it feel very ancient. So Ozzy's voice, it just has so much piercing capability. It's like, right there. Oh, that's so funny. I just did a thing um, that I attribute to Marilyn Horn, which is a super famous opera singer, if you don't know her. She always talks to you go like, like, get the focus up in here, essentially. Um, so, hey, opera uh, sometimes merges with metal in all kinds of own unknown ways. <laughs> and he's got that kind of focus that's right here in the face. It cuts like crazy. I, <laughs> I'm gonna go back. Ooh. I wanna get his entrance in there. I very I very much like that he begins this with a little slide. Me like it feels very it picks up on that creepy vibe that was established in the intro. Kind of. One more time. It's like whiny.
<laughs> so he's keeping it in that pocket, in that forward pocket the whole time. Um, it is it is not shifting out. It's just like really delivered. Um, helps cut through the instruments for sure. And it's interesting. Here he goes a little bit under the pitch, a little bit flat. My ears go, oh, that could be a little bit higher. But ultimately, in a performance, we're looking at the emotional feeling and the delivering of it. And when I think about things like perfect pitch or something like that, that is that is a way to deliver a message. Um, ultimately, I want a person to get their message through to me the most. And I feel like what I'm getting right now is that Mr. Crowley is kind of creepy and I get a lot of questioning happening, which makes sense because there's a lot of questions in the lyrics as well. And I've got I've got some sort of like almost shivery um, evilness that I sense in the song as well. One of the things I have to compliment Ozzy on is his ability to sing a line. He is able to keep the voice present over a long period of time. And I don't hear a drop in energy that's, or a significant drop in energy, I should say, that's coming between words or consonants. He's really continuing to focus that sound, keep it driven through the whole thing. A lot of times you'll hear sounds and singers that start to sound a little more chopped, kind of like little sausages with the little rings between or something. And when it's chopped like that, it's an opportunity for the audience's attention to drift away. Ozzy instead is just channeling this way the whole, whole, whole time. That takes a lot of intense focus. And you can see that and the way that he's treating the microphone, the way he approaches his singing every time, um, he'll kind of throw back maybe between verses and then get up next to that microphone and close his eyes. And really, it seems like he's channeling all of his energy into the microphone. Oh my gosh, that was an amazing solo. Whoa, I, I need to go back and hear that solo again. Um, Randy Rhodes and wow, I remember in the first video, he really blew me away too. Um, and one of the things that I feel like is the biggest shame is that he passed away, I think at age 25 and timely death, just imagining what he would have continued to create blows my mind. Uh, <laughs> that that solo was so grabbing. It's so funny. I'm I'm usually way more grabbed by vocal parts 
and the instruments can be very, very grabbing as well. But the, the wow factor of this solo is astonishing to me. I'm going to go back a little bit. By the way, everyone has really amazing hair. Like, look at that, that floof, <laughs> floof factor that Ozzy's got going on. And um, I also feel intimidated by the, the deep V-neck that I think it's, I think it's Mandy is sporting a deep V-neck. Man, and, and the fringe and the, the red spandex. Oh my gosh. Wow. They were daring. Yeah, I get to be Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> That the series up where he's essentially repeating the same pattern as he's going up, but even does a little bit of pitch bending with it there, um, it just, it drives my adrenaline. The way he picked that phrase up hooked me. Um, the way he uses subtle pitch bending in there. Well, it's not, it's not super subtle. It's just, it's like a light touch of it. It's not subtle. It's more like he dabs in just enough to make my eyebrows feel weird and then <laughs> um, hooks you with that. And then he takes essentially a motif, meaning a small phrase, uh, da -ga -da -da -ga -da, is essentially the, rhythmic pattern of the motif he was using in there. And he developed that and he took it into several different places in that solo, moved it up and down. It was really cool. Um, it was so fun to hear how sometimes as it felt like maybe something was winding down, he would do a really big sudden leap or he would do at the very end a leap with a pitch bend um, to hand off that energy to Ozzy to sing it. Wow, really masterfully constructed. <laughs> Shivers. few things about this verse here. That's so interesting. I feel like, are we doing all verse, verse, verse? There's not a verse chorus structure that I'm hearing in this song. Oh, that's fascinating. Uh, so a couple of things. First of all, Mr. Crowley, I read, is actually the incorrect pronunciation of Alistair Crowley's name, which is kind of hilarious. I, I really like correct pronunciations of names. Um, but because Ozzy said it this way, I'm going to say Crowley as well. Um, apparently it is Crowley though, if we were to really be in England. Uh, and he was considered was like the wickedest man of all times or something like that. I think it's so interesting that Ozzy chose him as a subject for a song. Um, it really does feel edgy and creepy. And I've continued to get this like, magical, dark, just a dark magic vibe happening throughout the entire song, which I think is right on with what they were going for. Um, it's so fascinating also to hear the way that Ozzy will sometimes play a little bit with that pitch that was, I think, 
uh, reminiscent then of how Randy plays with the pitch too. Just like, whoa, fascinating. Also, his eyes in this part were really, really cool. He's scary at one point. Right here, I think. <laughs> oh, and that part, I guess, is talking about um, drug usage. Uh, white, riding a white horse, I believe, is referring to taking some sort of drug trip. And he's inviting this dark magician to come along with him on that. Fascinating. <laughs> he goes for diphthongs so hard. <laughs> Disbursement? <laughs> Interjection. There we go, right there. It's so good. I'm excited for what's coming up, um, but I have to talk a little bit about this section here. I like the way um, the and the guitar Randy is, is really combining a couple different harmonies in there as well, and introduces us to an entirely new metal uh, melody as well. <laughs> uh, I think Randy Rhodes makes me stumble over my words in excitement. I I don't know if I've ever been this excited about a guitar player. <laughs> it's really cool. Uh, so. I think it's, uh, I want to go back a little bit. I think it's so important to notice and give credit to the intensity that Ozzy continues to deliver with. And I think this is one of the reasons why he is such a staple sound. Um, it, he has an intense drive through the voice at all times. Is that voice pretty? I don't know if I would personally say like, oh, this is a pretty voice. I would say this is a very successful voice. Um, he has continued to get his message through the whole time. He's got excellent diction, really excellent diction. And he's able to keep it in that pocket the whole time so that we're always able to hear his voice. It's, it's impressive. It's successful. And I appreciate that sometimes... A singer doesn't want to just make something that is beautiful. Sometimes you need to make something that is pointed, that has a jab to it. And I just, I think it's very important to have lots of different kinds of voices creating different kinds of expression. So I want to go back um, and listen to, oh, I think I already went back. I want to listen to that intense focus that he has in this part. <laughs> that hair's going, oh, oh, that's cool.
Um, this is so amazing. <laughs> I was just like, like, I felt like water come into my eyes at one point from how amazing this is. Uh, <sighs> the way that he phrases and makes it feel like the phrase is going to burst with energy, but then takes that energy and ties it over into the next phrase is incredible. It's hooking me. It's taking me on this incredible journey. I, I can't even explain. Like I could pull it apart and analyze all the things that he's done, but I feel like that is just genius. That's an understanding of music that very, very few people in this world have. And even fewer can instantly grab and just create a solo like this. Wow, I'm gonna come back to here. This, the way he takes that and sweeps over. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh man, I missed that ending. It went straight into the next song so quickly. Uh, we're going to go back and listen to it again because it is so good. Not only is Randy Rhodes totally killing it, but I was also seeing Lee Kerslake, I think that's the way you say his name, in the background, just going crazy on the drums. They're having so much fun together. I can only guess that the other guys too are just just jamming out. I <laughs> like the way at one point that Ozzy just scratched his head. It was like, wow. Yeah, <laughs> like Randy's killing it right now. This is incredible. How, how does he do this? This is amazing. Okay, so let's listen to it again. I'm surfing. Like the way that right in here that he, it feels like you're cresting multiple waves. It's just, ah, it's so thrilling and exciting and it takes me along with him very well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's having too much fun. You can tell by the hair. <laughs> wow. Whoa. Just... Whoa. That end solo was so amazing. I'm flabbergasted. Randy Rhodes is a genius. The way he is able to hook and then carry you through tons of waves of sound is extraordinary. It's mind boggling. And it's fascinating to me that those waves of sound, I get more from guitar than voice. Ozzy is this balance to him, essentially, of singing a very directed and pointed melody and with very clear lyrics. Like he's telling the story and then 
it's more like Randy Rhodes takes you on the emotional roller coaster of that story. What a fascinating and perfect combination. Oh, delightful. Thank you so much. If you haven't seen the first time that I ever heard Ozzy Osbourne, you should check out that video over here. And thank you so much to all of you for this recommendation. It blew my mind. Thank you. And I hope to see you again soon.